Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video 40. This is on information exchange between organisms. And so if you know anything about biology, you know what message these organisms are trying to send to us. It's a go away from us kind of a message. This is the poison arrow frog and we saw these when we were in Ecuador. Um, they produce this coloration because they have skin that produces a toxin. Uh, and so if you were to eat a poison arrow frog, and, and, and let's say you're a bird, you're going to associate that toxin with that color, and it's going to tell you to stay away. Flamboyant cuttlefish is the same way. It produces a neurotoxin, and it produces not only this coloration, but it also can raise the musculature on, on it and create these real wild looking uh, pictures. I mean, just Google cuttlefish video and you're going to find some crazy stuff. And so again, they have a toxin and it's a message they're sending to other organisms, don't eat me uh, or you'll die. And so you're associating this color with that. Um, this down here seems to be, this snake seems to be sending the same message, um, but, but this one's actually using mimicry. And so there's an old saying, because a coral snake looks like this and a milk snake does as well, and the uh, saying goes, if red touches yellow, you're a dead, dead fellow. If red touches black, you're okay, Jack. And so since the red is touching the black here, this is just a harmless milk snake. Um, but it, if you're like me, you're going to stay away from anything that has coloration that looks like that, just because you've been conditioned to do it. And so uh, in this podcast, I'm going to talk about information and how or organisms use information to communicate. Now, in humans... Um, just talking is a great way that we communicate and send information from one to another. But again, most organisms don't have the ability to communicate um, verbally, yet alone through uh, podcasts. And so I'm going to talk about mechanisms by which they can uh, communicate. Uh, they will send signals. Those signals can be um, chemical, those signals can be visual, auditory, uh, and the example I'm going to give you is how bees have learned to communicate using a waggle dance, it's called. Uh, that signal is going to have a specific behavior, and so um, especially in organisms that want to defend a, a specific ter territory, they can actually mark that territory. That signal is going to have a, a desired consequence or de desired effect in, in organisms which pick up on it. Uh, the example I'll talk about is wolves. And then I want to delve a little bit more deeper and talk about natural selection. Uh, it's easy to say this is uh, to observe a behavior, but it's, it's sometimes harder to think about, well, how could this behavior uh, have arisen? And so uh, I'll talk about courtship behavior in, in sage grouse and, and how that's been learned over years and how that's been passed down from organism to organism. And then finally, I'm going to talk about how cooper cooperation, not only competition, but cooperation is also important in, in flocking behavior and how that may be has arisen through natural selection through years and years and years uh, and years. And so let's start with signaling. And so if you're a bee, you live in a colony and you have to go gather nectar. And so you gather nectar um, from flowers and it's kind of a hit or miss. So once they get a hit, once they find some nectar, there's actually a chemical switch in their brain and they associate the time of the day, location of the flower and where it is. Now if you're a bee, when you fly back to the hive, you now have to send that information to other bees so they can find it. Because a colony is going to work more effectively if all the bees are able to quickly identify where the flower is and move it. Uh, in ants, they'll leave a chemical message, but in a bee, they've got to fly there, so you can't leave chemicals to find that. And so what's the information that they have to send? Well, they have to send where it is. In other words, what's the angle to the flower? And they use the sun. The position of the sun tells them the time of the day, uh, but the angle with the sun tells them where the flowers are found. And then the other thing they have to tell them is the distance. And so they've evolved a really cool way to signal other bees. It's called the waggle dance. And so if you look at a colony of bees, it seems chaotic. But the more you look at it, you'll start to see that certain bees are doing this waggle dance. And so what they'll do is they'll waggle their body back and forth, and then they'll move in a figure eight, and then they'll waggle their body back and forth, and then they'll move in a figure eight like that. Now all the other bees are just gathered around and they're watching this dance because that dance tells them two things. Uh, first of all, if you were to draw that angle right here through that dance, it actually is the same angle that we have in relation to the sun to the flower. And so the angle at which they dance tells them the angle to the flower, 
And then how do they say the distance to the flower? Well, it's the number of waggles tell them in B distance how far it is to that flower. Um, so that's a crazy kind of a way to signal other bees. Um, and so if you're a scientist, how does that occur? Well, they're, they're, uh, as we look at other, not, not bees, but as we look at other insects as they return, they're also doing some kind of a, a primordial dance, and that dance is giving a, a small bit of information, but it's highly evolved in bees uh, because they live such a social life. Okay, uh, what about behavior and how that affects other organisms? Well, one that I'm familiar with here in Montana are wolves of, of Yellowstone Park. And so once they reintroduce the wolves in Yellowstone Park, they quickly establish territories, and they're fiercely territorial. Um, most people don't know this about wolves. If another wolf enters into their territory, all the wolves will kill it. Uh, and occasionally that's manifested by the wolves going into a town and killing all the dogs in that town uh, because they're fiercely territorial and they'll team up on them. Here's a group of, of wolves that are just moving and, and, and uh, they're surveying their territory. Now, how do they signal other wolves, hey, keep out? They do that through howling is one way. And so they howl to let other wolves know where they are. But if you look at these, this is after they were introduced in 2002. These are all the different wolf packs in Yellowstone Park and they have really clear lines of territory. And so how do they make sure that other wolves don't come into their territory? Well, they use a signal as well. In this case, they will urinate on trees, and that's territorial marking. So what does that urine leave? And we see that manifested in our dogs. What does it leave? It's a chemical message. It's not only saying, hey, stay out. It's saying, this is the wolf I am. This is the pack I am. So it's sending a lot of chemical information to other wolves. Uh, grizzly bears will do the same thing. They'll scratch really high on a tree, and other bears can see that, and, and they know to keep out. Um, and so that's a great way to signal other organisms uh, of your... Uh, intent. Next, learn behavior. So how do we get this learn behavior? And more importantly, that's why I put uh, Charles Darwin here, how does this evolve over time? So this is another organism that you can watch here in Montana. It's called the sage grouse. This would be a male sage grouse over here, and then this is a female sage grouse over here. The males will have these uh, pouches that they'll puff up in the front, and they make this really cool kind of a, uh, a noise. And they actually uh, have a really cool courtship where they'll develop what's called a lek. And so a lek is going to be an area where the males will just hang out. And I've seen this uh, in, in Montana. It's really cool to watch. The males aren't interested in humans. They're just interested in mating. And so what happens is that male, the alpha male of the sage grouse, will defend this lek. You'll have some beta males and then some gammas around the outside. But only the alpha and the beta males are able to um, mate. And so the females will actually find this lek they'll mate with the alpha and then they'll leave on their way to lay their eggs. And so this courtship behavior in, in birds is very important because you wanna make sure that you're only mating with an organism that's very uh, close to you. And so there's a really, um, there's this ritualistic way that they mate. In other words, a, a, a male, uh, a typical bird may have to be the right color, it may sing the right song, it has to dip its head three times and the female has to spin around. They have these really delicate ways of courting. The reason why is that if you get the courtship wrong, then you have gotten eaten over time. And so by that selective pressure, we have these really elegant courtship mechanisms. Uh, the lek is just uh, a, a um, just kind of a, a exaggerated version of that uh, in birds. Flocking is another example of that. These are the red-billed Kulia of Africa, and they'll form these beautiful flocks uh, and they'll be just massive. I had read on Wikipedia that sometimes it'll take five hours just for a flock of these to come by. Um, and so what are you getting with a flock? Well, you're getting protection. And so if you look at all of them, each of these birds is looking in a different direction. And so they are looking for predators. And so it'd be really hard to sneak up on them. And so once these birds started living together, they started living longer. And also, if you're a bird of prey up here, it's really hard to target one bird when you see this flock just moving over time. And so there's been this uh, movement towards this learned behavior of, of flocking or cooperation. Uh, but they did that one generation at a time. If you didn't flock, you were destroyed or killed. 
and then those genes for that were uh, killed with you or that behavior was killed with you. And so over time we have this. Now we see that in wolf packs as well and cooperation in humans you would say as well. Um, it's really hard to get along with other humans but if you can cooperate you can do really really well. And so um, that's information. That's how it's used by organisms and I hope that's helpful.